Welcome to God's house. Happy Mother's Day to all you mothers, potential mothers and mother figures that are here this morning. We celebrate with you. We praise God for your compassion and love that you exemplify uh, on a daily basis to not only children, but to those around us. And so it's your day. And we welcome you. If you're visiting your mom today, or if you're here with your mother, we welcome you. It's good to have you with us, and we pray that you experience Christ in this place as we worship him. And we have a time of fellowship afterwards that you're encouraged to stick around for. I have a couple of announcements. Um, we as a church body are called to care for those in need. And one of those needs that we have right here, right in front of us, that might be a little passive before us, is Rex and Ruth. Uh, Rex, as we know, is recovering in the nursing home, and Ruth then goes and sees him every day. And and we're looking for people who would just be the hands and feet of Jesus and bring him and spend some time and, um, and spend some time with the winters. And so if you'd be one of those people, if God's leading you, uh, talk to Gene. Talk to Gene or one of the council members, and they'll uh, putting together a little uh, schedule. Also, when we go to God in prayer, we want to remember the Vince Reese family, if you're unaware of who that is. Uh, Vince Reese married Dennis Newhouse's daughter, not even a year ago. Um, they dated probably for five, six years. Uh, they were living in Colorado. He was kayaking, um, what day was it? Friday. And they found him yesterday. Uh, he drowned. And um, a lot of heartache. Vince Reese, if you know Shorty, he works at John Deere in Corsica. And uh, Shorty lost his wife, Sheila, to MS, cancer few years ago, and so we want to pray for that family this morning, too, as uh, they're going through a difficult, difficult time. In light of that, God calls us to come here and be faithful, to worship him with the body of Christ. And would you stand with me as we look at our call to worship this morning? This is how God welcomes us. Jesus Christ has come into heaven and is at God's right hand with angels, authorities, and powers in submission to him. Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Blessing, glory, wisdom, strength, honor, power, and strength be to our God forevermore. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The praise team is going to lead us in song this morning. We're going to sing a couple uh, praise songs, Grace Alone, and As the Deer Pants for the Water, So My Soul Longs for You. Let's lift our voices to God. Say. 
Father in heaven, as we come into this house of worship, it is true that we long to worship you, to spend time with you. So Lord, as we do that, we pray that it may be a blessing to you. We don't reflect and look at ourselves, who we are, but who God is in us. So bless every aspect of our worship, we pray. And we pray, Lord, you'll hear us as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's welcome each other into God's house this morning. What'd you get mom for Mother's Day? Awesome. Hi, Nora. Really? Morning, Cheryl. Morning. Happy Mother's Day, Ange. Mark. Happy Mother's Day, Clay. Happy Mother's Day, Jess. Yeah. Rookie, how are you? Good. You have a good day? Good weekend? Good, good. You may be seated. And as you take a seat, we're going to turn to number 453. 453. Uh, happy are our home when God is there. And let's lift this hymn to the Lord.
go to God in our congregational prayer, let's first go before God and ask him to wash us clean in a prayer of confession. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you have raised Jesus from death to life and crowned him Lord of all. We confess that we have not bowed before him or acknowledged his rule in our lives. We have gone along with the ways of the world and failed to give him glory. Forgive us and raise us from sin, that we may be your faithful people, obeying the commands of our Lord Jesus Christ, who rules the world and is head of the church, his body. Amen. Father in heaven, we are reminded today of the beauty of what you ordained in life the church, gathering, and help us, O Lord, never to forget the power of gathering together as the body of Christ. Also, Lord, we're remembering this morning, or we're reflecting on what you ordained in the family, the truth of a husband and a wife coming together, and the Bible is clear, the two shall become one flesh, no longer separate, the unity as one. And we take it a step further today, Lord. We remember that ordination of man and woman, but especially today, we remember motherhood. The definition, Lord, could be miles long. Compassion, love, nurturing, encourager, Courageous, individuals who give selflessly. And Father, I'm just hitting the fringes of what a mother is, and Father, we are so thankful for them. I thank you, Lord, for mothers, for mother figures, for stepmothers, for those who have impacted our lives from a female point of view in a powerful way. And then there are those, Lord, who maybe have a tarnished idea or past pain of a mother. Maybe a family separation where they never seen their mother again. Maybe a distant mother who found different avenues in their life to worship rather than tending and nurturing to the needs of their children. I pray, Lord, in this day, too, that you would somehow revive their spirit, that your Holy Spirit would move and that you would reunite mothers and children with a positive influence. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers that are represented here this morning, for mothers that are seen as individuals who care for their children, for those around. We thank you, Lord, for all the women and ladies here this morning and young women as well, Lord. And we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to see how you've created them in your image. We pray, Lord, that you would bless a family circle from fathers and mothers to children to grandchildren to grandparents. We're all in those different stages of life. Some of us, O Lord, are in a stage where we're pretty self-sufficient. Others are really dependent on their parents, and then others are dependent on those who care for us because of the age that we are in. That age where our bodies begin to somewhat deteriorate, don't work like they once used to. So Father, it gives us opportunity as a church, as individuals, whether we're living in a block where there's a person down the road who needs encouragement, needs us to pick up some groceries, whether there's one who needs us to give them a ride, we think especially of Rex and Ruth, the opportunity that you've given us. Thank you for Dell and his wife's opportunity, Lord, to encourage. And now, Lord, may we step alongside. We thank you also, Lord, for opportunities of outreach, whether it's in uh, 
the idea of going to a hospital today, visiting someone that we know, encouraging someone at a nursing home, or maybe someone that we come in contact with as we sit around the family table. May we encourage and share the love of Christ. Father, so often we wake up in the morning and we just expect this day to be ours. We expect the next breath to come as we suck in our lungs. We expect our heart to beat and we know, Lord, that this day is a gift. We're reminded again in the last few days, Lord, that life is fragile. As we remember those who are suffering the pain of death, we think of Ivory, Reese, think of Shorty Reese, the father of Vince. We think of Dennis and Jackie Noonhouse and the loss of their son-in-law. We can't wrap our minds around it, Lord, but we thank you, O Lord, that he trusted you with all of his heart. He believed in you as his Lord and Savior. But Father, we remain and the pain continues. Not only that, Lord, but all of us sitting here this morning have went through some type of pain of death in our lives, whether it's a sibling, a son or daughter, a mother or father, a grandfather or grandmother. It's final. It's final, and yet for a believer in Jesus Christ, we focus our eyes on eternity. But the Lord, though pain may be present around us, Pray, O oh Lord, that you would give us eyes to see the big picture. We think of those who are struggling with pain, those who are listed on our prayer list. We think of Ellie and Irwin. Continue to be with Roke. Again, Lord, your healing hand on Rex, and Deb and Harold and Leonard and Les. And be with Jim, too, as he prepares himself for replacement surgery. We ask, O oh God, for those who have pain here this morning. Maybe it's family separation. Maybe it's financial distress. Maybe it's just being bullied at school or at work. Or maybe we're feeling isolated, emotionally stressed. Be with those who are wrestling with addictions. Addictions of pride, addictions of fear, Addictions of drugs, of pornography, of alcohol, of gambling, and the list goes on and on and on. We all are addicted to sin in one form or another. And so, Lord, all of us plead and pray on the merits of Jesus Christ that you would set us free and take away the handcuffs of the slavery that is bound to our lives. We thank you too, Lord, for in this day where we celebrate mothers, we know that there are those who are distant from their mothers or their spouses. We think especially of Austin and Jay. We pray for their families today, Lord. Be with Nora and the rest of her family. Be with Angela and her family. We pray, Lord, too, that uh, they would experience the love of their loved one, encouraging them. Be with all of the 155th. We pray, Lord, looking forward to that day that you will bring them home safely. And that up until that time, Lord, give them strength and give them the ability to be the hands and feet of Jesus. We thank you too, Lord, in this farming community where we've been uh, blessed with sunshine and rain and a week of sunshine. We pray, Lord, for those who are putting seed into the ground or uh, looking forward to that. We pray, Father, for a positive week of that. And we ask, O oh Lord, that in your timing, in your providential plan, you would bless us with sunshine, heat units, rain, and then bless us with a passion to celebrate the gifts that you blessed us with. So Lord, we pray that you would bless us too this morning as we open your word. We're going to look at a part of instruction that you gave Joshua. We're going to look at that in the context of mothers, and not only that, but also graduates, those who will be graduating or have, how you encourage us on our walk with you as well. And so be with us, Lord, as we open the bread of life. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We 
before we do that, let's turn to number 788, 788, and now thank we all our God and will remain seated as we sing. you this morning to turn to a familiar portion of scripture, Joshua 1. Joshua 1 verse 9 is a lot of people's favorite verse that you'll hear. Be strong and courageous. But we're going to read the first nine verses of Joshua 1. As I titled my message, it's time to be courageous. Joshua 1, beginning at verse 1, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now you, then, and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all to the, all the Hittite country to the great sea on the west. No one will be able to stand up against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Friends, the reading of God's Word, oftentimes we hear this verse, verse 9, in the context of uh, graduation or an encouragement to graduates. Be strong and courageous. God will be with you wherever you go. Today is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to mothers. Uh, Today is also, uh, we're recognizing graduates. I know at Eastlake Candies, and this morning I know we have Dexter here. I don't know if anybody else... But um, we look at the milestone, and I'll flop back and forth here a little bit, uh, but I'd like to begin with mothers. Uh, Many of us can reflect back on mothers 
impact in our life, mother figures in our lives, uh, maybe a mother or maybe a mother figure uh, is something that we adore. There's national mother figures as well. Uh, First ladies oftentimes are known as special individuals. Certain ones stick out more than others. Uh, Mother Teresa, uh, we often hear powerful words of her encouragement as a mother. Uh, This world and all of its history has been filled with uh, leaders through the hands of mothers that that we hear about. But um, as we look at that this morning, we have to understand that we live in a fallen world and good and poor mothers alike uh, rise and fall. But this morning I want us to relate to Joshua a bit. When God places you in a position of leading, whether it's in the household or maybe it's at your place of employment or wherever it may be, a position of making decisions, whether large or small, what's our reaction to that? I ask that question because Joshua here is at a huge crossroad in his life. Uh, Maybe men or husbands... If you've ever made the mistake of saying to your wife after she has cooked or baked something in the oven, these words, that's not how my mom made it. Uh, If you've never said that, Greg, don't say that. Just a little marriage warning here. Uh, Because you'll feel, you'll understand what it's like for Skipper to sleep in the doghouse. Joshua feels that. He feels like that wife feels. When he hears these words time and time again in this position that God's called him into, that's not how Moses did it. And so not only has God called Joshua here into this task, into this position of of leading God's people, the Israelites, but stacked on top of that, he's faced with following one of the greatest leaders of all times. It's like if you had to follow as a mother, Mother Teresa. It's like, oh, I can't do that. Following in the footsteps of a man who could uh, speak to God through a burning bush, a man that could throw his staff on the ground and it would turn into a snake and pick it up and it turned back into a staff, who could strike the sea and part it, who could strike a rock and water would come out. This is the leader that he has to follow. Plus, he has a people that are constantly saying, we're sick of it. Let's go back to Egypt. I can't take this anymore. But God gives Joshua three goals that he must accomplish. First, he says, lead the people of Israel into the promised land. Secondly, he says, defeat the enemies in the land. And finally, he says, what does he say in verse... Six, divide the inheritance. No pressure. And this is what he hears every day. This isn't the way Moses did it. This isn't the way my mother made it. How do you and I handle those situations? To me, it stirs in my stomach when we're always compared to how other people do it. In fact, it spins me into panic mode, so to speak. When we hear, that's not the way the other preacher does it, or the other pastoral work is, or the other Sunday school teacher did it, or, or to your mother, that's not how my mother did it, or graduates, uh, uh, you didn't graduate with honors like your sibling, like your brother or sister did. What's our reaction to that? It's a downer. And soon we begin to question our position and our purpose in life. Even when God gives us promises to stand on, or much like he did to Joshua, we oftentimes sit in laziness and doubt. Can God really? Can God really? Then there are times where God calls us into being used by Him in a real way, and the opportunities are always before us, 
and things go quite well, and we actually become a little self-sufficient and a little proud and prideful. I think I've shared this story before. Adrian Rogers tells about a man who bragged that he had cut off the tail of a man-eating lion with a pocket knife. Wow. Everyone stood in awe and oohed, and finally one man asked, uh, that's unbelievable, but why didn't you cut off his head? And he said, well, somebody already had done that. You see, what seemed huge and odd and wow was diminished, minimized. Joshua was just a servant to Moses. He wasn't this big, well-known leader. In fact, as I look at this, I would think there would have been maybe a much more higher status leader, one of his sons, Moses' sons, maybe a Caleb. And this is why God commands Joshua in verses, I think, 6 and verse 7 and verse 9. Be strong and courageous. Be very strong and courageous. But this is where I want us to hang our, our faith lesson this morning, what we take home with us and grasp. Uh, when, when God says to uh, Joshua, be strong and courageous, be very courageous, can I ask you this morning, what does it mean to be courageous? Be filled with courage. That's a good answer. We hear the word equality all around us. Equality between man and a woman, equality between races and creeds and religions, everything has to be equal, and in that, be courageous. How do we face that? I believe we're at a crossroads in our culture, especially spiritually, where courage is a must. It's a must. The Hebrew word, the Hebrew meaning for courage here, when, when God says, uh, Joshua, be strong and courageous, the Hebrew meaning is to be alert to what's going on around us. Wow, that changes things. And so when God says, Joshua, be strong and be alert to what's going on around you, be very alert to what's going on around you, I look at that and my first thought is, how many Americans today are courageous according to God's command to Joshua? How many of our leaders are spiritually courageous? How many of us are alert to what's going on around us? We become pretty passive, do we not? Myself included. Reason being is we live in somewhat fearful lives. Graduates, you need to be spiritually courageous. And if you're unsure of what this Bible, this Word of God, this infallible Word of God has for instruction for you and I to be courageous, we have one strike against us. All of us do. For it is then that we are unsure what is right and wrong around us. What the absolutes are around us. Some of us have the mistaken definition of courageous meaning, oh, that guy's courageous. He has no fear. That's false. As strong as Joshua was, do you think he ever had a moment where, boy, I, don't, I just don't think I can do this anymore. A better way to define courage is that you move forward in spite of fear that exists in the situation or the position that you're in. We see just a fringe of good leadership and probably a, a tick of fear as to what is the first thing Joshua does. And God calls him. Two things happen. First, God calls Joshua, and I think this is huge. He calls Joshua to lead the people of Israel. And notice what he doesn't do. He doesn't say, I want you to lead the people of Israel like Moses. He 
doesn't compare. Brad, I want you to preach like Billy Graham. Sally, I want you to be a mother like your mother was. God's made all of us individuals different. Even Joshua, God doesn't compare him to Moses, but he says, I want you to be strong and courageous. So the second thing Moses does, and we didn't read of it, it you can read it this afternoon later on, is what does he do? He puts godly people underneath him. And those people are part of his courageous venture. Can I tell you a secret here this morning, mothers and graduates and all of us, before you can lead others, God has to be leading you. Before you can lead others. Mother be mothers, before you can be a great mother, a great role mother, model for your children, God has to be your father. A little boy came to the Washington Monument and noticed a guard standing there and he looked at the monument and he said, I want to buy this. And the guard said, uh, how much money you got? He said, I got 35 cents. And the guard replied, you need to understand three things, my son. First of all, 35 cents isn't enough. In fact, 35 million isn't enough. Secondly, the Washington Monument is not for sale. And finally, if you're an American citizen, you already own it. How often do we cry out for God's blessing? How often do we try to earn God's favor? How often do we try to live a good enough life? When if we're a child of Jesus Christ, we already have the blessings in front of us. Paul says in Ephesians 1 verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places with Jesus Christ. It's all there. It's a package deal. Joshua was granted success in his position Because of the model and instruction God gave him. And so I want to pick apart verse 9 just a little bit because there's four things that God instructs him with. First, he says, be strong. Secondly, be courageous. Be understanding of what's going on around you. What else does he say? Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Be obedient to God's word. And then finally, be dependent on him. Now, this is not a definition of success in today's terms. I mean, if you go to Amazon.com, if you go to Google, what is success? There is thousands of books, thousands of seminars on their idea of success. And most of it will deal with trophies and uh, how hard you work, how smart you are, how nice you dress, how where you shop, how many degrees you got hanging on the wall, and on and on and on. And when I try in my life to balance out what the world's definition is of success and what's God's definition of, wow. There's a big tip on the scale of life. And so what does success mean to you? The world is searching for it. But the truth is found in God alone and in His people. You who are full of courage. One thing I have to consistently remind myself and look at this morning as well is when God calls Joshua, nowhere in this charge are words, Josh Joshua, because I am your God, everything will go smooth. Oh, I'd love that. Not the case. We live in a fallen world and we are sinful at birth. We cannot escape that. This story came to my mind and it fits into it here this morning. And um, In the northeast part of America, they fish for cod and they like to ship it to the most productive place in the United States, California, where they eat a lot of cod. But they struggled with keeping it fresh in the transportation 
And so they tried different methods. One of the methods was they would uh, freeze it. And of course, we know what happens when you freeze anything. Is you lose some taste, you lose some quality. Uh, secondly, they thought, let's put it in salt water. And when the cod got to California, it was mushy, kind of tasteless as well. Finally, a man had a bright idea. He said, let's have a tank and let's have it full of that cod. And in that cod, that tank full of live cod, let's put its most fiercest enemy, a catfish. And so they did it. It worked perfectly. The whole way from northeast America to the west coast of California, that cod was getting chased by that catfish, and it kept him active, and it kept him fresh. You see, to be spiritually successful, spiritually fresh, sometimes God allows a catfish in our life. And I'll be honest, I hate it. But it's then where we learn to be courageous, to understand what's going on around us, that the enemy is everywhere. It's then that we give eyes to see spiritual freshness. Mothers, graduates, be strong, be courageous, be obedient to God's Word, and just be sold out dependent on Jesus Christ. You have a bread. What's going on in my life, if you only knew? I agree, you can't do this alone, and I wish to relate to one of the tribes of Native Americans who would go through a little initiation process of turning their 13-year-old boys into braves. They would take that 13-year-old boy when on his birthday at 13 years old, and they'd take him into a dense forest, blindfolded at night towards dark, and then they would take the blindfold off, and he would have to stay in the forest all night by himself. Dark as the ace of spades. Every twig that would break, every howl he heard, he immediately looked for danger. Scared out of his wits. And finally in the morning, the sun would begin to pierce through a little bit through the interior of the forest and he would look around and he would see flowers and he would see trees and he would see a, a pathway out and he was getting somewhat excited and then he looked around a little bit more and to his utter amazement there stood a man just a few feet away with his bow and arrow drawn. And he looked closer. And it was his dad. been there all night, protecting that young brave. Every time life with its pain, of death, of sickness, whatever it is, shows fear in our lives when the, when the howls of Satan's temptation are all around us. We have to remember that visual truth that God stands there the promise of His Word, of His breath to take. He says, be courageous. Be courageous. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, I thank You, Lord, for just beautiful testimonies of leaders in Your Word. I call them beautiful, Lord, because they weren't perfect. They went through the same struggles that we go through today. And yet, Lord, we see your faithfulness to them, and it warms our heart. It gives us a freshness to understand, that, yeah, the enemy is out there, but God is still on the throne, and for that we praise you. Pray, Lord, that we can be courageous, spiritually courageous. We see that collapsing around us. You can't say this in, in a certain setting. You can't say the name of Jesus Christ. Father, will we be faithful to you? We must. 
So, Lord, give us the strength to be strong in Jesus Christ. Use this message, Lord, any way you see fit, where we are at in our walk with you. And we give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and confess our faith. This is what we believe, not only from our mouth, but let's say it from our heart. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We celebrate our love for Jesus Christ with our morning offering. part, Lord, of the Trinity, we praise you for. We thank you, Lord, for the Father sending your Son, Jesus Christ, and then on Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit, as we will celebrate. We thank you, Lord, that we are recipients of that. And through the words of 1 John 5, 13, that we may know that we have eternal life because of what Jesus Christ did for us. Because of that reflection, Lord, we give back give back in different ways, being used by you, being our hands and feet, and also giving back our financial blessings that you blessed us with. We thank you, Lord, that you placed it within our heart. May we give of our first fruits, Lord, the very best of what you blessed us with. Use it, Lord, to build up your kingdom, we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. 682, 682, guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Let's sing three verses of 682. God's parting blessing, and I'm going to ask you to have a seat. Now may God bless you. May God, the one who's able to keep you from falling, to present you before his glorious presence without fault and without great joy. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority forever and ever. And all God's children agreed and said, Amen. Would you have a seat, please? to do respect and love for the mothers, for the women of this, the young ladies of this church, uh, the council, I always think this is one of the great outreaches, if I could have a couple uh, council members come forth, maybe Jean has more words to say. Always get me out of jail. Right. Give Matt the flowers.
Would all the ladies, young girls stand? I want to pray for you. We appreciate you, like Jean said, not only in the church, uh, but we appreciate you in the church outside these doors. Uh, what you do in our homes, what you do in our communities, and what you do for us as men and uh, families, we appreciate you. And so I want to pl- pray over you. Father in heaven, I thank you for what you've instilled in creation here in the beauty of a woman. Thank you, Lord, for their kindled spirit, for the reflection of beauty of who you are through their lives. And I pray, Father, that you would give them courage, too, strength for each day when the cup may feel weary and half full, that you would instill with them, Lord, a passion that they are making a difference So I thank you for a young girl at the age of three to the most elderest, I think of Laverne and 90. I pray, Lord, to everyone in between, that you would bless them, that you would move in their hearts, O Lord, to be a godly woman, to be a godly mother, to be a godly adult. We give you praise for them, Lord, and we thank you for them from the bottom of our hearts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you all stand? We're going to sing our closing. My friends, may you grow in grace.